Good morning. Welcome to Campus Ministry Daily Chapel here at Augsburg University. We are really, really glad you're here and glad that you took time to join us. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Tom Witt for our uh, music and Josh, our cantor. Thank you for sharing your gifts with us. And we are uh, excited because we are positioning ourselves to hear a really good word from our very own President Previna on the threshing floor. Is that right? Yes. And our preaching series is Courageous Curiosity. And so again, we thank you for being here. A couple of announcements. On tomorrow, we will have a word from our pastoral intern, Tori Victoria, Tori Reamer, and we will also install her as our pastoral intern this year. And on Friday, we'll have a community space around healing and wholeness um, as we in, go into the weekend of uh, September 11th um, in all the ways that as a community and as a world, we need to heal, amen. And so now let us uh, center ourselves and invoke the presence of God, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of mothering father God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Yes, open ourselves up to the presence of God. We ask for ears this morning to hear your word, eyes to see your spirit, hearts to feel your life within us, wisdom to receive your words, your spirit, your life, and together the gathering says, amen. sets a table before me in the presence of my foes. She anoints my head with oil and my cup over. So 
A reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. Love never ends, but as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. We know only in part, and we prophesy only in part, but when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide, these three, and the greatest of these is love. Grace and peace to you from God, our creator, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning. How wonderful it is to be back in this sacred space for these daily chapel services here in our 152nd academic year. Never take for granted um, the wonder of community that gathers in this space, even as we did throughout the pandemic. When Pastors Justin and Babette first mentioned the courageous curiosity theme for this fall's chapel series, my mind went immediately to the confirmation lessons I learned from my dad, who introduced me to Martin Luther's small catechism, in which, most of you know, we are taught to ask, what does this mean, the various parts of the Lord's Prayer and Apostles' Creed? What does this mean? Perhaps a form of courageous curiosity, perhaps a question we are called to ask always, and especially in this moment. For we find ourselves in liminal space, liminal from the Latin limen meaning threshold, a space, a moment where and when we know what we have been through, a pandemic, racial reckoning, economic disruption, climate change, and yet we don't know what is to come. A space and moment that requires faith and hope and vigilance for what God is doing in our midst. What does this mean, we ask? The social worker and TED Talk rock star Brene Brown has called this liminal space the messy middle. Perhaps that's how we're experiencing this space and moment, stuck in a middle that is, in fact, very messy. I chose this haunting version of the 23rd Psalm from Bobby McFerrin. Uh, he sings all the parts, uh, quite remarkable. Uh, he, wrote, he wrote that for his mother, uh, if you didn't know. Um, but it provokes our thinking of, with its alternative ways of expressing Psalm 23. Though I walk through a dark and dreary land, you will not forsake me. You set a table before me and my foes. Surely goodness and kindness will follow me all the days of my life. The stuff of faith and hope and God in charge, liminal space. The Apostle Paul reminds us, now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. Maybe here is the key for God's faithful people in this liminal space. Paul reminds us that though already known, we only know in part for now, saved yet sinful, the messy middle, this threshold moment is where we must live as God's faithful people. So what to do? Perhaps our cure courageous curiosity, it's a, <laughs> to get the, the C's going there, uh, our questions about what this means will show us a way forward into this messy middle. There's a liturgical season in the Christian calendar that rather resembles this messy middle. It's the time after Christmas and before Lent, it's called Epiphany. It's labeled perhaps a hint of what we are called to be and do in this threshold moment, to seek, to watch, to uncover, to follow. One of the signature stories of the Epiphany season is that of the three wise men, these wise ones who come from the east following a star, seeking a savior only to find a child living with his parents. They leave their precious gifts as they give thanks to God and depart by another way to avoid Herod's edict. It's a love story, I believe, a story that offers us a map for our lives of faith in the messy middle. I've learned much about this Wiseman, Wiseman story through the lens of W.H. Auden's wonderful prose poem, For the Time Being. In a section of the poem entitled The Summons, Auden has each of the wise ones remark on why he or she might follow the star. I find in these remarks an intriguing way to consider the logic of the story. So the first wise one comments, to discover how to be truthful now is the reason I follow the star. Imagine the situation, these mysterious kings and queens from the East see a star, they feel its pull, its majesty, its danger, its promise, 
and they step outside their positions of power and privilege. They take the risk of leaving comfortable and predictable circumstances to follow a star. They want to know the truth in a world where what passes for truth is wrapped up in narrow and confining formulae, in dizzying reams of information and misinformation, in insecurity and blind allegiance. Sound familiar? They want to be free. And to be free, they must be truthful. That is why they follow the star to find the truth. And therein we learn one of the most important lessons of the love story. God calls us out of our ordinary and comfortable circumstances to follow, to discover how to be faithful. The second one, wise, wise one then adds, to discover how to be living now is the reason I follow the star. The wise ones undertake the journey occasioned by the pull of a star. Who knows the risks, the burdens, the sacrifices? And therein they seek not simply to remember a distant past or to dream of a possible future, but to understand what God intends for us now. The star calls them to seek out the glimpses of truthfulness and faithfulness and good that are here now to be embraced and engaged. Not to dwell on precedent or speculation, but now. What is God doing now? Here is the second lesson of this love story. God is here with us, present now and here. Our journeys must be open to discovering what it means to live faithfully in this moment, to do God's work in the here and now. We don't glorify the past or put all of our hope in the future. We are here for each other in the present, in the messy middle. And the third one, the wise one continues to discover how to be loving now is the reason I follow the star. The wise ones follow where the star leads them to a surprise, a baby lying in its mother's arms. So counterintuitive, so outside, outside the realm of the world's definition of success. And here's the perhaps most startling aspect of the story. Think about it. You can step out of your comfort zone, even take the risk of a journey that challenges you to be open to life and the here and now. But when it comes down to it, as humans, we expect that at the end of this sacrificial, risky journey, we'll be rewarded with a result that measures up to our sacrifices, that satisfies our human longings in ways we understand. But instead, it's a child living in pretty squalid conditions. This is it. This is what we gave it all up to find. Surprise, surprise. Yes, this is what it's all about. Lovers are open to the awesome and life transforming surprises we will know in each other and in our awesome God. And finally, Auden has the wise men together proclaim to discover how to be human now is the reason we follow the star. Here's the culmination of our love story. The wise ones have reached their destination and they do only what they can do. They give rare and precious gifts. They stand back at awe, in awe at God's grand and mysterious ways. They suspend disbelief and proclaim God's great wonder and love for God's people. They learn to love again, to love a child whose work in the world is to save God's people. Lovers fall in love with their beloved and therein find themselves most fully find what it means to be truly human now. How do the wise ones offer us a map for our lives of faith in the messy middle? How will we find the truth, the living, the loving, the humanity? Are we willing to be drawn out of our usual places of power and privilege and comfort to undertake the journey of faith, to be open to surprises of love and to offer our gifts in response to the wonder of God breaking into our lives? How do we love as we have been loved? This is the love story of the wise ones. This is our love story as God's faithful people in the world, called to the messy middle, called to be and serve our neighbor, called to fall in love again and again, here and now. And the wise ones teach us how. And now faith, hope, and love abide, these three. And the greatest of these is love. Thanks be to God. Amen.
you again, President Prina, for that message and for your grace because I misnamed your title. Threshing moment. I'm so God. I'm so glad I knew Jesus. Right? I need Jesus. I'm flawed. But the grace is that we all are. Amen. So receive this benediction. In our faith, hope, and love abides in the messy middle. The message following the star, faith now, loving now. Never ending loving God with courage and curiosity in this threshold moment here for each other. Now may the light of Christ burn brightly within you that the world may see and know the loving source of all truth and light. In this threshing moment, go. Be light and love on this campus and in your world. Amen.